Brandon Foster must be licking his lips at the prospect of uh, the race, and he's talking now to David Icke. OK, well, thanks, David. Uh, Brendan, first of all, though, Colin Jackson, let's look at that. Uh, beat the, um, beat the, the big man again. Well, that's a great result, you know, just a week before the World, the World Cup in Barcelona. To actually beat Kingdom, who's going to be representing America out there, um, I think that's really good for Colin. And like you said, you know, the team spirit is something that we're hoping is going to happen, and I'm convinced it will. And I think we'll have, actually have an awful lot to cheer about next weekend. I'm really getting excited <laughs> about it. In fact, um, Sally Gunnell, who will be running for Europe, of course, right. I mean, she's really uh, come on in stature this year, isn't she? Well, she was close to Sandra Farmer-Patrick, who's obviously the one to beat. And like Ron Pickering says, I think Sandra Farmer-Patrick can go close to the world record. But Sally Gunnell is uh, getting better all the time. She's had an excellent season right throughout, and I'm sure she'll finish it off with a flourish in Barcelona. Yeah. What's brought her on this year, do you think? Well, I think she's actually managed to keep her speed by running the shorter hurdles, you know, the 100-meter hurdles, and also the strength in the winter and the 400-meter races that she's run has made her a really strong 400-meter uh, hurdler. But the fact of the matter is, her technically over the hurdles, she's really good. So the fact when they're coming into the finishing straight and they're tired, she's able to maintain her form, which is obviously the thing that gives her that impetus in the last couple of hurdles. So, uh, the, you know, the, the performances leading up to the World Cup, obviously everyone's getting ready for it and it's taken on a much greater significance in Britain as a result of the British men's team qualifying for the final. And uh, everyone's getting carried away with that spirit, and a few of them have just missed tonight's meeting just to put the finishing touches to their own training. And I think uh, we're going to have a lot to think about. The, 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 the overall um, Commonwealth Games has been in the news as well, but I think for a little period we'll forget the Commonwealth Games, even though the selectors have... <laughs> <laughs> Let's not quite forget it, actually, because um, the selectors are, well... Dare I say, it got themselves in a bit of a mess again, haven't they? Well, I looked at the team the other day and I saw um, Egan Billy in the 800 metres for the men, Egan Billy and um, Matthew Yates, and then one other, Sebastian Coe, Steve Cram, or Peter Elliott. And, and that makes you just think about, you know, how the hell did they get themselves into that situation? And, you know, there's lots of reasons why they did, but then Peter Elliott and Steve Cram having a runoff for the 1500 metres doesn't seem to be the right answer either. So, uh, you know, Continually the athlete, athletes are getting better, but continually the, the sport is being dragged through the mud, you know. Anyway, Brent, let's uh, carry on with tonight now. Uh, the Grand Prix meeting, the Grand Prix finals here, and we'll go to the uh, men's 200 metres. Robson De Silva in this, the fastest man in the world this year, commentator David Coleman. <laughs> 